the scripture and I'm going to move my wise men. They're headed back home. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. God's word for God's people. May our hearts hear and our lives respond. love the scripture lesson that tells us about the three wise men, magi or kings, whatever we call them. And we don't really know for sure what they were, but we know that they studied the sky. And that's why many scholars call them uh, astro astrologers, not astronomers. They were astrologers. They thought they could predict things based on the, what the stars were doing in the sky and to see a new star, people kind of thought that meant a king was being born. So we know that God reached these people. And even though they weren't Jews, weren't part of God's Hebrew people, they lived far, far away. They were foreigners. And yet we know they were absolutely critical to Jesus' very survival. No one knew that at the time. It was risky from the very beginning that Jesus first came to the planet. First of all, because his mother turned out to be pregnant before she married the man she was going to be married. That was a dangerous thing back then. But God made sure Joseph had a heart prepared to love Mary and protect Mary and baby Jesus. And so that danger was averted. The next danger, really big danger that came along was that after Jesus was born, uh, these wise men who came from far away were looking for him. And, and we had that joke, you know, you always, there's dish towels and you hear, it, you see it posted on Facebook that if the wise men were wise women, they would have stopped and asked for directions. They would have been there on time. They would have brought sensible presents like diapers and casseroles. And I forget what the third thing is. Uh, but that's not really fair to the wise men who did stop for directions. If you read the Bible, sure enough, they did. And that turned out to be a big mistake because where they checked for directions and they didn't know, they didn't know how evil Herod was. They didn't know that he would do anything. He even killed people 
in his own family to try and make sure no one ever threatened his rule. So if he was willing to kill people in his own family, he sure was totally willing to kill some child who people were starting to call a king. So they stopped for directions, all right. That turned out to be really bad. Uh, they did hear where the prophets had said the Messiah would be born and everything was pointing to Bethlehem. And so they headed that way. And it always amazes me, not, I mean, amazes me a lot that they had the courage to pack up and go on that long trip. Can you imagine trying to tell your neighbors, you know, when you're heading out on it, it wasn't like today, you just get a plane ticket and go there. Uh, it was a lot harder than that. You were going to have to travel by camels, maybe donkeys. There are robbers along the way. You couldn't be sure of Motel 6s with the light on. You'd have to be camping out. There'd be dangerous animals. It was a really hard, dangerous trip. And so when you started packing your bags and your, and your neighbors would say, well, Joe, where are you going? And you'd say, well, there's this star in the sky and I'm going to follow it. Do you think everybody would say, boy, that sounds like a really smart idea. We call them wise men now because we know that was part of God's plan. But back when those guys were packing their bags and getting ready to go on a trip, I wonder how many people, how many of their friends and neighbors thought it was a good idea. I imagine some of their wives weren't keen on the idea either. I can see it now. Um, Ethel says, Joe, what are you doing? Putting all our gold in that chest. And one of the wise men says, well, honey, I've got to go. I just have this feeling that it's important for me to bring really big presents to a king who's a baby. I don't know him. I've never seen him. I'm not even sure where I'm going to find him. But a few other guys and I decided over beers one night that it would be a really good idea to pack up and head off. Do you think that most of the wives would have thought that was a good idea? Maybe not. Maybe some of them said, I'm in, I'm coming with you. And maybe some of the wives went. We don't know for a fact that these wise men were even all men. We don't know that. Um, when Vincent builds some Lego wise people, some of them are women and some of them are men. We don't know that. All we know is that somehow God got an idea in their minds and in their hearts. And no one of those guys could have gone on their own. Even if there was only three, that was company for the journey. And there might have been more. One of the things this scripture tells us is that when we need courage and we're doing something hard, God will give us friends for the journey. We don't have to do hard stuff alone. God will bring us supports. You see that in churches all the time. Sometimes if we're going to do something new in the church, maybe try something that's kind of hard. One of the ways I can tell that it's an idea that God wants to happen is I find out that more than one person is coming up with a similar suggestion and a similar idea. God plants seeds in more than one heart. So that's one way you can tell God is at work in this. There are lots of seeds, and at least you have some friends for the journey because we need that. So God gave friends for the journey. That's an important lesson from hearing about the Magi coming. Very important. Another thing that's important is there are lots of times we get nudges in our hearts. And so these guys didn't worship God. So we can't think that only people who worship God the way we do are the ones who get all the ideas from God. Mm. 
this scripture shows us that's not true because this was something very important that happened that wound up saving Jesus. And it was a seed planted in the hearts of people who lived far away, worshiped different gods, didn't know the same God that we know, and yet God was at work within them making something very important happen. And we read about this story about the Magi or wise men. We read about it from the Gospel of Matthew. How do we know that that's really God's point? That there are going to be foreigners. There's going to be people outside your group that are very important to God's message. How can we be sure of that? The Gospel of Matthew makes sure that we're sure. Those folks who are doing the one-year Bible are going to notice it starts in Genesis chapter 1. It also starts in Matthew chapter 1. And when you read Matthew chapter 1, there's a list of names of people who are ancestors of Jesus. And in that list of names, in Matthew's gospel, it's all men except for four women. And those four women are foreigners. It mentions Tamar, it mentions Rahab, it mentions Ruth, and it says the wife of Uriah, but we know that that was Bathsheba. And so these were all probably, some of them definitely, the other ones probably foreign women. So the Gospel of Matthew makes it very clear from the very beginning that Jesus is possible on this planet because these foreign people, in that case women, who certainly did not have much power, but those foreign women were absolutely essential to preparing a path for Jesus. And now we read about the wise men coming with their gifts. And that probably, remember how poor we talked about how poor last week that Joseph and Mary were. Remember, they came to the temple with Jesus, and they couldn't afford a lamb and a dove. All they could do was two little birds. They had two doves, and that made sure everybody knew they were really poor. So when the wise men come to find baby Jesus, they come to a house that's really poor. Now, we picture, because we have those manger scenes, and we know about the angels all around. That's why everybody thinks there are angels guiding wise men. But that's not what scripture says. And scripture doesn't say that at that time, Joseph and Mary were still in a stable. Jesus was still in a manger. The Gospel of Matthew says that the wise men came to the house where he was. So they came to the house. And so was it right after Jesus was born? Was it a year or two later? We don't know. We know that Herod asked pointed questions about when they had first seen the star. And so from that, Herod concluded the child had to be, couldn't be older than two, might be as old as two, but had to be under two. And a terrible, terrible thing happened. We'll talk about that more next week. But what we heard this week is that the wise men were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod to tell him exactly where to find Jesus. Herod asked them to let him know. And they planned on it. They thought, good idea. Here's a nice guy giving us good directions. This is why men do not ask for directions. Because those directions that they got, got them where they needed to be. But lots of bad things happened after that. And so God speaks to these wise men. He nudged their heart to get there in the first place. And then he nudged them again through a dream not to go back to Herod. Now, that was kind of dangerous for them to try and take another route because Herod could have sent their soldiers to slaughter them for disobeying him. But they took that risk. They went another way and didn't tell Herod where to find baby Jesus. And next week, we're going to talk about uh, Joseph being warned in, a dream, warned in a dream too, that it's time to escape 
Now, could a poor family could not escape if they didn't have money. But did they have money now after the Magi came? Lily, shake your head yes if you think they now had money. Yeah, they did. You're right, Jacob. You're right, too. They had money because they received presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So if they needed to get out of Dodge in a hurry, suddenly they could. They really could do it. So God provided for baby Jesus, first of all, through the women that came before in his ancestral line, and now with wise men appearing on the scene to bring just the very presence that might have seemed ridiculous, but weren't ridiculous. They were exactly what was needed. God did provide that, and God provided through people who were outside the Hebrew community. So we have to remember that as we go through tomorrow, today, the next day, this whole year, we have to stop and ask ourselves who outside our community might have something important to share with us, something we need to hear, something we need to think about, or maybe God will call us to try something new, to do something, say something, make a decision that maybe we hadn't thought about before. But God will give us friends for the journey. We just have to trust that those nudges in our hearts if we get used to listening and following through those nudges in our hearts and those people who seem so different from us can have such an important part in how our whole world is shaped. It was true long ago and it is true today. In Jesus' name, amen.